the Nostalgia Critic cannot be here right now due to reasons of vengeance, but he has left a recording before he left for you to enjoy. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. To err is human. To make the worst piece of half-assed cow shit to ever star a bad acting seven-foot basketball superstar is unforgivable! Sorry, sorry, it's just... Wow, is this one bad! I mean, you have no idea. If this movie was a dog, I'd have it put down. If this movie was a car, I'd have it impounded. If this movie was a starving young woman who pleaded to me for just a bite of my ham and salami sandwich, I would kill her! Alright, that's a little dark, but you get what I'm getting at. That's the kind of hatred this movie has driven me to. <sighs> if you haven't guessed yet, I'm of course talking about the whimsical and magical journey that is... Kazam. Cause I am Kazam. Who may? I'm more than us. It's uninventive, unimaginative, and unbelievably retarded. But hey, don't take my word for it. Let's take a look. The movie star Shaquille O'Neal. Sit back down. Apparently back in the 90s, people thought if you could look in the camera and say drink Pepsi, you were considered a good actor. That's an insult! So Touchstone made a deal with Shaquille O'Neal to star in their latest family-friendly romp. In the movie, Shaquille plays, and I'm quoting here, a rapid genie with attitude, who's ready for slam dunk fun. What they mean to say is that it's a corporate write-off to make a quick buck to entertain mindless porta dummy kids who think that just because a man can make a decent free throw means he can make a decent crapped out movie like this one. But I digress. What's the movie about? Well, it opens up with a wrecking ball, no doubt a metaphor for the rest of the film. It knocks over a lamp that apparently holds the genie in it, which forces him to fall into a boombox, which I guess the genie decides to call his new home. A genie in a boombox? Could this possibly be a musical romp? Oh, let's see if the film is so cruel. Alright, so we meet a boy named Max, who apparently likes to walk around school and make faces at this mentally retarded kid. He's caught by some bullies who spray paint him to the ground and chase him all throughout the city of New Bronx Lynn. I love the scene here where he tries to escape the bullies through a fence. He went through a hole, what do we do? He went through a hole, what do we do? He went through a hole, what do we do? He went through a hole, what do we do? He went through a hole, what do we do? He went through a hole, what do we do? Oh yeah, go through the hole. <laughs> Seriously, a blind amoeba could figure that out. So they chase him into that abandoned building that was being torn down, but stopped being torn down for some reason, where he finds the boombox and accidentally unleashes the genie. Where in the fable does it say genie spin like Tasmanian devils? <laughs> To wake me. Ain't gonna make this a mystery. Who's that sorry wannabe that disturbed my seeds? Really? This is that quote unquote rapping genie they were talking about? Um, I should let you guys know that there is a huge difference between rapping and rhyming. Rapping is this. Who rock grooves and make moves with all the mommies? The, the back of the club, club. sipping my wet is where you find me. And rhyming is this. I saw a duck. Got a lot of luck. This movie is fun. You see, it's very, very different. If you got the itches for a sack of riches, don't matter how avaricious, I'm the man that could grant your wishes. Bitches! So Kazan tells Max that he's his genie, but Max doesn't believe him, imagine that. So Kazan tries to show off his powers and. <laughs> wow, my wish actually came true. Hey, Kazoo! Kazoo! Right here, dum-dums. So Max goes home and finds that his mother is getting engaged to a fireman who looks like Steve Gutenberg's even less talented brother. Listen, Max. I don't intend to take the place of your father. I just want to be the guy who helps your mother. He also finds out that his mother lied to him about his real father's whereabouts, and it turns out he's actually located in the city. So Max decides to set out and look for him, hoping to rekindle some sort of sacred family bond. I guess they just abandoned the whole genie thing. It looks like they're gonna focus on the importance of unity and finding your family where- Ah, oh, fuck, there he is. Are you, like, really lonely or something? So Kazam pesters Max until he decides to believe him and make a wish. Look at that shit-eating grin. It's the same look he gives when he's advertising something. Don't you wish you had one of these? Actually, am I the only one who's freaked out by this? A tall, bearded man with an evil grin is following a little boy around, offering him treats and saying he can make all his wishes come true. This is a family film, right? Get your fat ass back here. So Max finally finds his real father, only to discover he's a musical talent agent working in the underground world of pirated music. That bastard!
Kathleen Kleinball. Who's that loser? That was my father. Uh, I guess I should have an emotion here, but I don't want to. So Max goes to a secret hideout, which is filled with all the stuff TGI Fridays didn't want, and finds you know who there. Here, Max talks about his father, and I guess Shaq just grins some more. Is that a wish? Rather than decide to move forward with the plot, they decide to have a pointless bike ride. Here, the genie finally shows off his real powers. Don't get all hysterical. Say thank you for your miracle. What's the matter? Your tongue is broken? Time like this, you should be smoking. You want this film to be good and I'm not joking? Grab yourself a J and get to smoking. No true words have ever been spoken. It'll seem much better once you've been token. See, I can do it too. It's not hard. You know the rules. Now comply. Kazam! He got oh my gosh, it's gonna be easy! Ah! Did Kazam just go back to the future? He comes back looking like a Cadbury egg dressed as Liberace and finally convinces Max to make his first wish. But in rhyme, of course! I wish I had junk food from here to the sky! Why not? Higher than high? That's an understatement. So Shaq, as the almighty genie, literally makes junk food fall from the sky, but only the stuff he's promoted from past commercials. So while munching on his munchies, Max comes to a sudden realization. Until I make those last two wishes. I own you, don't I? Technically. So, a white person owns a black person to provide services against his will without getting paid. There's a word for that, I can't quite think what it is. Um, ownership? No, 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 that's, that's not it, that's not it. Um, possession? No, no, that's not what I'm looking for either. It's, it's something along the lines of, um, um, WHAT IS WRONG WITH THIS MOVIE?! That's horrible! So Max and his... Well, I guess there's no other word for it. SLAVE! Go looking around the neighborhood to see if they can find his father again. At some point his pants fall, I don't know why, I guess it's supposed to be funny, haha. -ha. And they end up at his father's place again. Here, they come across an intimidating bodyguard. This isn't a toy store. Unless... You wanna play... My game. Of course, what they don't show you in this scene is his face right afterwards. So Max finally locates his father once again, and, as suspected, he's a douche. Let this kid in here. What's this, an amusement park? <laughs> <laughs> amusement park. But once his dad finds out that he literally produced him, he changes his tone a bit. Hey, everybody, quiet down, quiet down. Check this out. This is my boy, Max from the tail. <laughs> hey, I'm about that. I'm a deputy dad. Who knew? So the father invites Max to his hot, sexy nightclub, because that's the perfect place for a ten-year-old, where Kazam starts to dig those groovy, funky beats. Ooh, who's the cutie over there? From another planet. Don't just stare, come over here, and let me see you jiggy jiggy jam it. Don't encourage him, you'll jiggy jiggy regret it. What if they don't like me? They really don't like you. The question is, what are you gonna do? Sit down and hum quietly? Get set. For my tet a tet tet, cause I am Kazam. Ooh, man. I'm more than I seem, you all are looking at your dream. In your coffee, I'm the queen. Oh, come on, vanilla ice was blacker than this. Let's green egg and ham it. What? Let's green egg and ham it. What is this, Seuss Doggy Dog? I mean, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. That's something an infant says when he's just learning how to read. Never in my life have I ever seen something so stupid. Meanwhile, we come across a guy who has thick eyebrows, so obviously he must be the villain. He's interested in the magic gold flashy stuff that comes out of Shaq's boombox. He quickly realizes that he's a genie and tries to use Max's father as a way of controlling him. Meanwhile, Max is back home sleeping when... Oh my god. OH MY GOD! BAD TOUCH! 911 emergency! There's a tall man who's been stalking this kid, giving him treats, and now he's touching him while in his bed and wearing his pajamas! Hooray! That's right, kid! Fight him! Fight him! Ah! Smell like hippopotamus butt! Oh my god! Now he's bathing in front of him! There's no telling what he's gonna do next! Hurry! So after that bit of I don't want to know what, Kazam comes out and introduces himself as Max's new tutor. Cause he really looks like your traditional egghead, doesn't he? He then indulges in yet another pointless scene where he makes French toast fly. 
That's sad when the breakfast is the best actor in the movie. Yeah. He then goes outside to talk to Kazam about how him and his father are not really connecting. What's like the worst thing you've ever seen in your life? Audience? This movie! But rather than talk about their problems, Kazam decides he wants to do something better. Rap about them. I did have this friend in the thousand BC. We <sighs> so that's the whole story. That's all you gotta tell? You got to listen to my rap from bell to bell. Those babies you know, babies guys, um, I was thinking, rather than succumbing to what's the popular norm, I was, um, thinking maybe you could have a, um, a real conversation. Uh, you know, and nothing too deep, but uh, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, this is a possibility. Maybe there's a deep personal pain that, uh, you don't want to acknowledge that maybe you... Now talk right! I just wish you could change things, huh? Make things different. Talking about Jin. Jin? What's a Jin? <sighs> Jin is free. Jin could do anything. Problem is, Jin only exists in fairy tales. And I don't believe in fairy tales. Wait, what? Jin only exists in fairy tales. And I don't believe in fairy tales. The genie doesn't believe in fairy tales. <laughs> the genie doesn't believe in fairy tales. Something's wrong. Ah, screw it. Let's just move on with the flick. Max sees his father get beat up by senior thick brows and calls on Kazam for his help. Kazam! Kazam! I gotta make a wish. What are you doing? Get off the table. Kazam, I need a wish, okay? Right now? No, in 250 years, stupid. I need a team. Time out! What the hell is up with that glass of water thing? Wait, he was in a glass of water? He suddenly, boom, he's on the table. I mean, what? Why did that happen? Is it like Super Mario Brothers? Is it a warp song? I mean, what the? You know what? Forget it. Fine. Let's just move on. The movie will be over faster that way. So anyway, rather than help Max with his problem, Kazan got a recording deal as a professional rapper. I'm dead serious. I guess his hit single, I Can Jam With Sam I Am, went straight to the top. Meanwhile, the bastard son of Mario and Saddam Hussein kidnaps the kid and takes possession of his boombox. He then gives the kid the shaft and summons Kazam to his warehouse, where he demands him to do all his evil bidding. Kazam is powerless to stop his new master. <laughs> but wait a minute. Bite it, Kazam! Bite it! You can do it, Kazam! You can break free from the white man's chains! He's gonna go shat foo on your asses! In typical basketball all-star fashion, he personally slam dunks the villain into a garbage can. But unfortunately, it's too late. Little Max, it appears, is dead. There's nothing to do now but mock this emotionally lacking moment with totally inappropriate music. You're the only friend I've ever had. And when you needed me the most, I wasn't there. Yeah, you were a bit of a douche, Kazam. I just wish I could have granted your wish. I wish I could have filled your heart. Well, life's a bitch and then little kids die. Oh, of course he doesn't die, because Kazam realizes the value of human life, or something like that. He is free from his bonds and able to breathe life back into little Max. You're alive! You're alive! He's kissing him! What more do you need? So Shaq brings Max back to life, turns into... this thing, and reunites him back with his father. On top of that, he also becomes human, which means... You're getting a job. A job? <laughs> a job? He can't get a job! He's a genie! <laughs> That's pretty out there! <laughs> <sighs> Out of my hairy ass! This movie is wretched! A festering shack of shit! If I had just one wish, one 
wish, it would be that this movie never existed. And that's why I have no doubt that Citizen Kane is one of the worst films of all time. No, 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 there's another movie that's called Kazam. No, 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 I you keep on me on. He was a genie. I swear to God, he was a rapping genie. He was a butt of the kid. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. I swear to God, he was a genie. He was rapping to Dr. Seuss. Cause I am Kazam. Who may? I'm more than I seem. You all are looking at your dream. You like popsicles?